Welcome to assignment number three, analyze your resources. It's time to take a closer look at resources and particularly on their characteristics, as this can help to reach sustainable agreements and negotiations. First of all, I would like to remind you how we define the term resources in the context of negotiations. Resources can be understood as all tangible and intangible elements in a conflict of interests that serve one or more parties' interests and thus may help negotiators to reach sustainable agreements. Therefore, resources are key elements in negotiations on conflict of interests. To highlight the important role of resources and their characteristics, we have developed a new framework to approach negotiations called Resource-Oriented Negotiations, or just in short, RON. In this framework, we focus on resources and their characteristics. These characteristics greatly impact psychological processes in negotiations and in turn affect the negotiation process and its outcomes. In the following, I would like to address three characteristics discussed in the RON framework. Specifically, I would like to talk about the ownership of resources, the divisibility of resources, and finally, the expected value of resources. So let's start with the resource characteristic of ownership. The ownership of a resource relates to the question of who owns the resource at the start of a negotiation and who is going to own it in the future after the negotiation has been ended. Specifically, resources can either be an exclusive, shared or undefined ownership. An example for a resource that is often an exclusive possession is money, but we may also own other resources exclusively, such as commodities or information. If we negotiate with another party on the transaction of two exclusively owned resources that will still remain in exclusive possession at the end of the negotiation, we have an instance of a so-called exchange negotiation. For instance, if a buyer and a seller negotiate on the transaction of a commode key for money, we would call this exchange negotiation. However, in this online course on commons, we are dealing with two other types of negotiations, distribution and contribution negotiations. In both types, resources are in shared or undefined ownership at some point of the negotiation. In contribution negotiations, we typically negotiate on how exclusively owned resources are transferred into shared or undefined ownership. For instance, if representatives of different nations negotiate on the reduction of carbon emission to preserve our global climate, we have an instance of a contribution negotiation. In contrast, in distribution negotiations, we typically negotiate on how shared resources are transferred into exclusive ownership. For instance, if representatives of different nations negotiate on fishing rights in international waters, we have an instance of a distribution negotiation. The second resource characteristic that is addressed in the RON framework is the so-called divisibility of resources. Resources can be divided in two different ways. First, resources can be divisible, meaning they can be divided into parts of the same resource. Second, resources can be dividable, meaning they can be divided into components of new resources or, in other words, they can be divided into sub-resources. So, let's start with divisible resources. A typical example is money. For instance, $100 can be divided up to its smallest unit of one cent. Even if it's divided in different parts, it remains to be the same resource, namely money. Another example for a divisible resource is water, which can also be divided into subunits of the same resource. By contrast, other resources cannot be easily divided into parts of the same resources. For example, a single car being shared between multiple people, the car itself cannot be divided into subunits of the same resource, for instance in a number of several small cars. 
However, the usage of the car, like the time frame in which the different people drive the car, can help parties to find agreements. Some resources can even be divided into subunits of different resources, which then can be used to satisfy different interests. Mary Follett first described this in 1940 to illustrate the role of dividable resources. In her example, two sisters were negotiating on a single orange. At the end of the negotiation, the two sisters compromised to cut the orange in the middle and each took half of it. Later, they discovered that one sister was interested in the pulp to squeeze fresh orange juice, while the other sister wanted to use the peel to bake a cake. In this example, by dividing the single resource of the orange into two different sub-resources, namely the peel and the pulp, a win-win agreement could have been found which would have served both sisters' interests. You can find a very illustrative video on a modified version of Mary Follett's orange example in the course library. Let's take a look at the last resource characteristic addressed in the RON framework, the expected value. As indicated by its name, the expected value of a resource refers to the value one would expect to obtain in the future. In the terms of negotiation research, the subjective value reflects parties' preferences for a specific resource. Differences in parties' preferences are particularly meaningful when people seek to find integrative agreements. For instance, in a negotiation on the distribution of the harvest from a communal field, some people may have a strong preference for vegetables, while others may have a strong preference for fruits. It is important to note that the value of a resource is not only characterized by parties' preferences, but also by the balance of resources. For instance, many resources in negotiations on commons have a positive balance, such as, for instance, fresh water. However, sometimes the very same resource may obtain a negative balance, such as spoiled water from a nuclear plant. As you may guess, both the preference and the balance of resources can have a powerful impact on our perceptions and behaviors in negotiations on commons. Finally, as indicated by the term expected value, some resources do not sustain their value and balance over time, but may change it in the future. For instance, a commonly owned farmland may change its value in the future if stakeholders plan to use the land as an industrial area. Different expectation with respect to the future of the resources can hinder us in finding mutual satisfying agreements. However, at the same time, parties' different expectations can be utilized to create sustainable win-win agreements through specific negotiation strategies, such as agreeing on contingency contracts. This strategy capitalizes on parties' different expectations regarding the outcomes of future events. In contingency contracts, each party is willing to proceed with an agreement by stating terms for the outcome each party expects to occur. Thereby, parties minimize the risk and maximize the expected outcomes with respect to the negotiated resources. Finally, it is important to note that the three resource characteristics addressed in the RON framework should not be considered to be exhaustive. You may think of other resource characteristics that could be helpful to reach integrative conflict resolutions. For instance, you will learn more about different resource characteristics in the video provided by Silke Helfrich in the library and also how these characteristics affect the process of commenting. I encourage you to think about other important resource characteristics within your own Commons projects and to discuss them with your teammates during this assignment. Since resource characteristics play such a fundamental role in negotiation, we will focus on the different resources and their characteristics in this assignment. I am looking forward to reading your resource analysis. Take care and enjoy your third assignment.